Hey, what is up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today I want to share with you how to use Emmet and CSS together to write both quicker and more accurate CSS. Emmet just takes shorthands and expands them very quickly. And like I said, it makes it go faster. So for instance, I could come in here and say like display grid and just do that and it expands it out. But it also helps you be more accurate when you can't exactly remember all the different properties that might be on some selector. So for instance, let's say I say, I know there's a bunch of stuff with animation, but I don't remember exactly what it is. I can just start to type the shortcut here and then it gives me name, duration, timing function, delay, all these kinds of things. I can give it a name here and then hit tab and do the next thing and just keep going like this, like 500, 400 milliseconds, whatever. All of these just tabbing to the next one each time and that helps you remember how to use CSS properly, how to write it properly. I'm gonna share with you a cheat sheet in just a little bit, so stick around for that, and that will help you learn these slowly at your own pace. For now, just try to pick out maybe one or two that I'm gonna show you and say, hey, I'm gonna use that in my code, and it'll eventually get under your fingers, and you won't have to think about it, and that's the time to learn the next one. Now, Emmet comes pre-installed in VS Code and enabled, but for pretty much any code editor, you can get Emmet and install it as some kind of an extension. All right, let's go ahead and break this out into, I think I've got five different categories. These are just things that I tend to use. If I do POS, I can do relative, or I can do fixed, or I can do static perhaps, which is the default, or I can do absolute. And just like that, hit tab and it types it all out for me. I could also then, usually when you do something absolute, you wanna set the top, the, the bottom, the right, the left. If you do T, that gives you top. If you do B, that gives you bottom, right like that, or left. And you can even do colon like 15 and it guesses 15 pixels, or colon zero. Uh, say zero like that, and it guesses zero. All right, so that's really quick. Uh, of course, now we have the inset property that is mostly supported, and that does all four. Uh, so that's another way to do that quickly, but no image shortcut that I know of. A Z index is a great way to pull things kind of towards the user or behind other items. And you can just do Z like that and tab and it sets it. Again, same kind of thing. You can do Z100 and it will just say Z100. Just put a colon in between. When you use before or after pseudo elements, you have to have some kind of content. And so one of the things that's really helpful is just to do CT like that and it's already prepped and ready for you. All right, so those are some positioning things. I hope that's a big help to you. Uh, another thing I use a lot is obviously display things like display grid or display flex. And this is even easier just a D and then block or inline block or just inline or flex or grid or any of these kinds of things. Uh, just really quickly, you can type that out. And that gets under your fingers pretty quickly where you're just typing it like that and not even really thinking about it. Then you might wanna adjust the children like of this grid container here. I might want to say, uh, let's say justify content uh, space between. All right, or space between, there we go. Um, and again, JC and then colon and whatever you want, space between. It works the same thing with justify items, justify items start or justify items end, and justify self the same way, start and whatever. Now, line items works the same way. So I could say AI colon and then start or center or whatever. I could also say align self and it's the same thing, end or center or stretch or whatever. And then finally, I could do align content. And again, it works the same way. So I could do space evenly. Let's see, space evenly like that. So that's really helpful. If you don't understand grid, I just did a series on it. And I hope that can be a help to you. I'll try to remember to add a card at the end of the video. All right, so we've looked at positioning and we've looked at display. Let's look at some sizing things. Uh, another one of these single character shorthands is width like that. And again, you can just use the colon and say width like, I don't know, 100, and it will say 100 pixels. Or height, same thing. Or you could do max width or min width. Or you can also say, uh, let's see, min height or uh, min width, same kind of thing. And for each of those, again, you can add a number after the colon and it will automatically expand it out for you. Now margin works very much the same way just like display um, and the width and the height and a lot of these single character ones, you just do M and then you can do like 10 or whatever and it will do margin all the way around. And as you might guess, you can say margin top and it will give you margin top or margin bottom or margin right or margin left and that works the same way. Padding is the exact same except you use a P. So P T, P bottom, P right, P left, all these uh, work the same way. So those are super helpful sizing and spacing and the nice thing about them is most of them are a single character. Now, one of the ones that I use a lot is background color because for some reason I always misspell background just because I think the letters, the way I type, um, they kind of get mixed up if I try to go too fast. But just a simple BC like that will expand out and actually give you a hex value uh, of white by default. 
Color is similar. It's another one of those single character ones just to see and then jump out. Now, as soon as you start typing, it will erase that. But if that's what you want, then it's really easy and you just tab right past it and it's good to go. Finally, some miscellaneous ones. If you look at border, in fact, if you just hit BD, it'll actually give you a one pixel solid black border. Uh, and you can just tab if you're fine with all that and then say like gray or something like that. I showed you the animate one earlier, but if you start to type animation and just hit tab, you can tab right through these and add them one after the other. Also, you've got transition, just like this, transition, and then it gives you a prop and a time. So you know which property you're applying it to and how long it is automatically by default. Another one that's easy to forget about is box shadow. How exactly you do that? Well, if you just start typing box shadow, it'll actually give you an inset. If you want to use that, now you don't have to use that. You can just hit escape, hit tab to go to the next one. This is your H offset. So you could say like, I don't know, two pixels, your vertical offset here, like five pixels, a blur, and you can remove that if you don't want that. And then some kind of color. And again, just tab to these one after the other. All right, if you've stuck around this long, I've got one little extra thing to show you that isn't really Emmet, but it is in VS Code, and I think it's kind of cool. And that is if you come up and you're using uh, CSS variables, like let's say you've got them declared on the root here, and you've got one called, uh, let's say, accent, and it's like HSL, I don't know, uh, 220, uh, let's do 50% and 80%, something like that. And then you would add some kind of property like a background color. And of course you can come in here and say var uh, accent like that and save it and keep going. But what you can also do in VS Code is just type a double dash. It's using its IntelliSense, which is VS Code's kind of like auto uh, completion engine to just grab your variable just like that. So just a double dash and the start of your name will drop down that little variable for you. Now I mentioned I would show you a cheat sheet and that's what we've got here. This is gonna be linked in the description. Got all this HTML stuff we talked about last time, but if you come all the way down, you're gonna see a bunch of stuff for CSS. And as you can see here, I barely shared any of this with you, but I just shared the things that I use most frequently, but you can see there's a ton that you can do with CSS and with Emmet. If you have questions about how to use Emmet in Visual Studio Code in particular, I'll add this link in the description. They show you how to do it, including how you can change uh, what expands your Emmet uh, snippets and all that kind of stuff, um, but I'll leave you to figure that out. All right, thanks so much, and I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.